today we're going to be focusing on the importance of capacity and we'll be looking at application requirements, device requirements, and some general guidelines for gaining more capacity. It is an essential element of wireless LAN design, implementation, monitoring, and support with modern networks because we're no longer in that era where we can simply say we'll install a few access points and people will have wireless access because we're now running critical applications or we're marketing that we provide wireless access at hotels and other hospitality areas, arenas and things like this. And when you market that you're providing wireless access and then people connect to the wireless network and do not have effective wireless access to the internet, let's just say they get a little bit frustrated. So to avoid that, we have to make sure that we've designed for capacity. And that's what we'll be looking at today. The second thing is that there's a bit of confusion that data rates equal throughput. But data rates do not equal throughput. Those are the data rates on the wireless link. So even if you get an average data rate of, say, somewhere around 200 megabits per second, the reality is that's not your throughput. Your throughput is going to be brought down lower because there are management frames and control frames. So these are things like your beacon frame going out from the AP that announce the features and capability of the AP, probe requests and probe response, association and authentication frames, reassociation frames, RTS, CTS frames, acknowledgement frames. These are all frames that are used to either manage access to the wireless network or control the communications on the wireless network. In addition, you have CCI and ACI. We've already talked about CCI, so even though I might be able to send a frame at say some very high data rate of uh, 11n data rate like 450 megabits per second well okay I can send my frame at that rate but I can't send a frame at that rate one right after the other continually consistently even when you accommodate for the uh, management and control overhead I also have the fact that I've got to wait to send the frame so I'm not going to get that throughput even if you're calculating though the aggregate throughput in the BSS Remember that other BSSs are also communicating on the same channel, very likely, causing co-channel interference. So within my BSS, the aggregate throughput will be lower for my BSS because of the times the stations in my BSS have to be quiet because of a frame they see from a different BSS. And then there's also adjacent channel interference where you see this a lot in uh, metropolitan areas, in shared buildings, where you've got people, particularly on 2.4 gigahertz, that don't know how to implement a wireless network, or they're using some kind of an automatic channel selection algorithm that's not configured right or doesn't work right. And so you see channel 5 and channel 7 and channel 9 and so forth being used, causing ACI, frame corruptions and retries from this, that kind of thing occurring. And then you've also got non-Wi-Fi. So you've got devices out there that are not Wi-Fi devices communicating on the same channel, even if it's a low-duty cycle because they don't play nice, they don't listen before they talk, they can cause interference with wireless LAN frames and cause, again, retries. So because of all of this, even with 802.11ac, even Wave 2 wireless uh, LANs on 802.11ac, you rarely see anything close to 1 gigabit per second in a BSS today. And so when we're talking throughput as opposed to data rate, what we can actually achieve, that's the key factor for capacity, and that's what we have to keep in mind when we're designing a capacity plan.